Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we are going to be talking about some new makeup releases that somehow got on my radar in the past couple of weeks. I do this kind of video once a month, so let's get started. Welcome everybody if you're new here, welcome if you're a returning visitor, thank you so very much for joining me today. In case you don't know what my channel is all about, I love trying out eyeshadow palettes, I love trying out Essence and Catrice products, and I love getting the use out of my products, so I love doing shop my stashes, I'm really sort of going back to old favorites, because I don't feel we need to necessarily always focus on the newest of the new, which is why my makeup releases video is going to be formatted a little bit differently than what most people do here on the YouTube realm, um, and that is that I'm going to split it up in a top five and a bottom five. Uh, so I'm going to first chat about the things that stood out to me in like a negative way, you could say, and then we're going to also talk about some honorable mentions, things that I think are good that they are there, but that I don't really feel I need to purchase straight away. These may end up on a wish list at some point, but they're not necessarily my priority. And then the top five are things that are definitely on my wish list or that I may have already purchased. Um, and then at the end of the video, I will quickly rope in my sort of monthly collected makeup haul of the things that I did buy myself in the month of February. So let's get started. So let's start off with the things that I feel that, you know, again, I save them because they intrigue me, but that I know I don't need. So a lot of these are palettes. Um, and the first thing I wanted to mention here is the new Glaminatrix Nocturnal palette. Now I believe the first launch of this already sold out, so if you were hoping to get this then I hope you got your hands on it already. I don't know when this will restock, if it will restock. Glaminatrix is an Australian indie brand and they are definitely on my radar as a brand to potentially try. However, their palettes are quite expensive so I really want their color story when I purchase it to be perfect. And this Nocturnal palette, when I first spotted it, it was like, ooh, that's such a nice, rich, grungy color story. This is totally my vibe. I love it. However, I have seen several pictures of this palette and it looks differently in every single picture that I've seen. So is it truly this dark and grungy or is it a little brighter? Because some of these shades definitely look brighter in other pictures that I've seen, so that's why I was starting to doubt this a little bit. Plus, when I really looked at this shade selection that we've got going on here, I felt it looked very reminiscent of the um, Shroud Cosmetics and It's Freaking Bats palette that they did together with Betty Bean. Um, at the time she was still called Butte Bean, but her new channel name is Betty Bean. So I feel it is too similar to that and I already have that palette. So then I was like, it doesn't really warrant me buying into this palette right now because it is quite expensive for me to buy all the way from Australia and it's just too similar to things I already own. So that's why this one is on the bottom part of this list. Then another brand that I'm really happy is releasing something new again because we hadn't heard from September Rose Cosmetics for a while. So I was super happy to see them announcing a new palette. It's called the Still Pretty. And in case you're unfamiliar, September Rose Cosmetics is a UK-based indie brand that is, I believe, also black-owned, if I'm not mistaken. I have two of their palettes, the Slush 1 and the Slush 2, and they are some of my favorite rainbow palettes for sure. Those are like my staple go-to rainbow palettes. If I need a rainbow shade, September Rose. So I was really happy to see them do something new, but then it's all reds. <laughs> and I was like, this is not my color story. So I think for the brand, it's great that they've come out with something new because I think this is the first time in like two or three years that they've really announced a new product that is an eyeshadow palette. And so I love that for them, but this is not my color story um, because I will not be wearing these shades enough to warrant a purchase. So the third item that I wanted to put in this bottom five list is the new blushes that have been announced by Makeup Revolution. Now I need to look up what these are called. These are called the Luster Blushes and they are available from Makeup Revolution. And when I first saw these popping up on my feed, I was like, hmm, has Hourglass extended their range? But that packaging looks off. These very much remind me of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blushes, which are some of my favorites. Um, so these, I think, are a very clever launch for Makeup Revolution. These look very pretty, but I 
pretty much decluttered all of my Makeup Revolution products over time because I feel there are just better formulas out there. And if I wanna go for an affordable blush, I'll go for my Catrice or I'll go for my Kiko. So I have other blushes by other brands that I just far, far prefer over Makeup Revolution, which is why ultimately, while these made me go like, Ooh, when I saw them popping up on my feed, I know I won't need these because Makeup Revolution and me, we are just not a match made in heaven. And then this launch, I haven't really heard much about, but then again, I kind of stopped watching these new makeup releases videos myself, so it could very well be that I just don't watch these very often, and that's why I haven't heard about it yet. But Juvia's Place has announced a new palette. It's a large palette called The Culture, I believe. And in, if you know me, then you know that I don't love very large palettes. I think this is 30 shades. Yes, it's 30 shades. And this really sparked my interest. Like when I first looked at this, I was like, ooh, that looks pretty. Especially those greens and those like turquoisey blues that this has but I just know it's too big. I would never reach for this. In fact, I've already filmed all of my declutters that are going live this month, and I have decluttered some of my larger Juvia's Place palettes because I'm just not reaching for them. So that's why this, I know no matter how pretty this is, it's not my vibe. I'm terribly sorry. And finally, another palette that I will not be buying is the new Beauty Bay launch. They came out with Love Notes, and this palette, I mean, you might think that I'm going to love this with the purples and the pinks and some cool tone neutrals. This probably looks like it's right up my street. However, with Beauty Bay, just like what I just mentioned with the Juvia's Place palette, I just find that the color stories that Beauty Bay does should be much more curated. So I won't be getting this. I think it's 20. This is a 20 pen eyeshadow palette. So that's like, like 15 to 18 is like really like my max of how many pans I want in a palette. So that's why this is just over that. So I feel it's okay. It's not too, too big, but I feel there's just repeat shades. And I feel that way about my Age of Opulence. I feel that way about my Book of Magic. Like there are just shades that are too, too close. And I feel if they were to bring it down to like a 10 or a 12 pan, that it, they would still be able to give you the color story and the vibe that these palettes have. And they would be even more affordable because I do really enjoy the, the Beauty Bay formula of what I've tried so far. So yeah, the Love Notes palette from Beauty Bay, I don't really feel I need it in my life. And then we get to the category of five products that I have seen that made me go like, ooh, that's clever or that's stunning or that's lovely, but it's not necessarily for me, but I can understand why this was launched. And the first item that I wanted to mention in this category is the Hindash Monochromance eyeshadow palette. It's face, it's cheeks, it's eyes. It's like, it's a can do it all kind of palette. And I thought his first palette that had a similar layout with these gradient shades was very clever. I think this is a great product if you're a makeup artist, but that's not me, so I don't need this. However, the color story of this very much more appeals to me than the first one did. That had a lot of warm tones. This seems to be a little bit more cool tone leaning, which is my preference. And this also seems to be much lighter. So it's much more aimed at someone with fair skin like me. I just know, however, that I will not be getting the use out of a product like this in my collection. And Hindash is quite an expensive brand to buy from as well. So I really don't need this in my life. Now, a launch that I'm sort of still on the fence about, like, do I like this enough to buy it, yes or no, yes or no is the new Lethal Cosmetics Night Flower Collection. So they've come out with this really pretty purpley packaging, uh, purple, uh, it's not purple packaging, but like purple shades in their palette. Apparently there's a couple of new du duochromes and multichromes in there as well. But what really intrigued me in this collection was their highlighters. And I've never tried a Lethal Cosmetics highlighter before. So the palette, I'm like, mm, I mainly buy singles from Lethal. So if they do some of these shades as part of their singles collection, I might pick some of those up because I tend to build myself a Lethal Cosmetics palette like once a year. Um, so I may do that at some point again this time around and then I might pick up some of these shades for sure, but I will be picking and choosing the ones that I really like. But one of their highlighters, I was like, that might be a good purchase. But then again, do I really need another one of those like iridescent flippy kind of highlighters? Because I already have so many. So that's why this is still sort of like, 
Yes, it's new. Yes, it's exciting. I like this. I think it's a good launch from Lethal, but I don't necessarily need it in my life. And another launch that I'm very happy to see, but again, it's not for me. It's the new Viseart mini versions that they've been that they're now coming out with of their larger palettes that came in the clear packaging. So Viseart started off doing these like clear packaging, very simple, basic packaging palettes, and they were pretty expensive. They were like 75 or 80 euros I believe a piece and I tried one of those which was the sultry but what those palettes all did was that they had one texture so they were all matte or all satin or all shimmer and that's what I why I feel I don't need any of these because I hardly ever reach for an all matte palette in fact I now I've pretty much decluttered all of them <laughs> because because it's just not really for me. I'm not an all matte shadow kind of gal. I like my shimmers. I like playing around with textures and having a, a variation of a few things going on, which is why I prefer the Viseart Petite Pro palettes. Those I really, really like. And those little palettes are definitely very much on the radar. So do I think it's clever for the brand to now offer their OG palettes in a smaller, more manageable consumer format? Yay, these will probably be as expensive as these like uh, smaller palettes as well, I hope. So around the 40 euro mark rather than the 80 euro mark that the others went for. And they seem to be offering the same color story. So I think this is very clever from the brand, but not something I need. And then I would like to chat to you about some Dior products. And this is actually two products from Dior, but I've Wanted to mention both, so I'm kind of grouping it into one, okay? So Dior is coming out with a Backstage Concealer. Hello! I love my Backstage Foundation for sure, but when it comes to found like when it comes to concealer, I don't know why. There have been quite a few concealer announcements. I believe Tarte is coming out with something new, Urban Decay is coming out with something new. The only one that really made me like perk up and go like, ooh, I'd like to try that at some point is the Dior. However, I still have my forever, what's it called, forever nude concealer from Dior to try out more. So I really don't need to buy another new Dior concealer just because they're launching something new. Am I intrigued with this? Am I at some point, if I have some sort of gift, gift voucher, going to buy this? I think I will. So this is a good launch from Dior and I think it's really good that they're doing a concealer in the backstage line. It's one of my favorite foundations, as I mentioned. And the other Dior products I wanted to mention here are their, uh, is it a limited edition? I think it is. Um, so they've come out with this limited edition um, collection where a lot of the packaging is in their classic houndstooth design. I mean, this is the kind of packaging I have been wanting from Dior for such a long time. Like this is such an iconic pattern that Dior does. And I love it. Here's the thing. It's just a re-promote of old products that are already in their existing line. So the product inside it, and most of the products I believe that have this packaging are mainly lipsticks. So it's just a way to get you to buy a lipstick you may already own. So for me, I really like this, but then truly make it a limited edition with new shades and things that we've got going on. I don't need your OG 999 Dior Rouge lipstick in houndstooth packaging Dior. I really don't. I really don't. <laughs> so that's why I love this packaging. I wish the entire line that Dior does would forever come in this packaging. Then I would buy definitely something from it. But A, it's limited edition, and two, it's just nothing really new, which is why this is in this section of the video. And then finally in this category is the new Nabla palette. Somebody uh, actually mentioned this in the comments, like, have you seen the new Nabla palette? And I hadn't really heard about it yet. It's called the Read My Mind palette. And I like this. I really, really do. I love Nabla eyeshadow. I love their cutie palettes. I have two of their larger palettes as well, the Secret and the Soul Blooming. And that's exactly why I won't be buying this, because the Read My Mind palette looks like a more warm toned version of the Secret palette to me. <laughs> like, just going by what I can find of, like, the color story so far on Instagram, I'm like, it's too similar to something that I already own by the exact same brand, so 
I don't need this in my life for sure. Like this is not not what I need. So that's why the Nabla Reply Mind palette is not gonna go onto the actual actual wish list. But this is one of those things, like this could be a slow burner. We're like a few months down the line where I'm, where I'm like, you know, I've seen some people review it and swatch it, and then I go like, oh, but that's one that I really want to own. Um, so because that's usually how it goes with me and Nabla. Like I'm never too excited about their launches straight away, and then I'm like, oh yeah, but it's a good, it would be a good staple to have. You know, that's that's what I'm foreseeing could happen to this, but I don't feel I need to get it straight away. And then we get to the top five. So what are the top five products? And I can be very short and sweet about it because next month, some of these products are going to show up in the whole section of my video. Um, because essentially, um, I've already purchased some of these things. So the first thing that I wanted to mention is something I purchased, and this is the Odin's Eye times Angelica Nukvist Hella palette. Now, this one had me on the fence at first, um, because I looked at this color story on Instagram and I was like, really? Greens and pinks? Is that where we're going? And then sh I show I watched her video where she shows the palette and does all the swatches. And I was like, I want that in my life. Especially, there's only like two shades that I'm really not that interested in. But it's got some interesting like yellowy mustard shades in the top row. And then some cool tones in the bottom row that I think I will very much enjoy. And then you just have some brighter pops in those middle two rows. And that's essentially what I'm really, really going for. So I think this is a very clever palette. I would like to play around with it to really see how I feel. This is currently making its way to me, so this had to be mentioned in the top five for sure. Then something I haven't purchased, but that's again something that is going to go onto the wish list because I do at some point this year would like to purchase something more from M Cosmetics. So last year I placed my first order with them and I got some of their serum blushes and one of their, um, what's it called? Um, Heaven's Glow blushes or powders. And in this new masterpiece collection that they've launched, they've launched two more of the um, Heaven's Glow powders, and they've also released some new lipsticks. And I saw Ellie Glines do a video with these products, and some of the products were quite dark on her. So I think I'm just going to pick and choose some of the um, products here. But what I'm especially interested in is some of their eyeshadow palettes, because I haven't tried the brand's eyeshadow palettes. Now I did have a bit of an issue with their shipping. I was overcharged when it came to customs with them, um, which I think has to do with the shipping company rather than the brand. So I was like, I'm gonna try it one more time. And if it happens again, then I just know that it's the brand doing something wrong and then I need to send them an email in customer service. Um, but yeah, the M Cosmetics Masterpiece Collection, I saw this and instantly knew that my neutral lover's heart just started beating a little bit faster and that I would love to get my hand on like one of those eyeshadow palettes and one of the powders and probably one of the lipsticks. So I definitely want to try more from this brand and this collection definitely gave me the push. Another product that is very high on the wish list, but that I haven't purchased quite yet, this is already out. And I'm sort of still on the fence, like should I get this straight away or not? And it's the Lois Cosmetics Meet Me at Midnight palette. And the reason why I'm interested in this is because it looks really, really cool. Another really good grungy color story, I'm sure. It reminds me a lot though of the Shroud Cosmetics Arcana palette. And that's why I'm sort of like, do I need this in my life? Yes or no. Plus I tried the Lois Cosmetics uh, Meet Me at the Underworld or in the Underworld palette. And that had a lovely color story as well. But I felt the shimmers in that palette were a little bit lacking. So I'm still a little bit on the fence because I'd like to try more by the brand. And I think this palette looks absolutely stunning. It's the grungy vibe that I love. So this is one where I'm like, yeah, if I'm sort of, if this sticks in my brain, like if it like lingers around, this is usually how I can tell whether I really want to get a product is if I can't forget about it. Like sometimes you see something popping up on your Instagram feed and you go like, ooh, and like two weeks later, you no longer think about it. And that's how you know you didn't have to buy it. At least that's how it works for me. Um, but with this palette, it's been sort of like, going in this section of the video and then a few days later I'm like ah do I really need it so I'm sort of still going like yes no yes no yes no with this one but if by the end of this month or next month I still feel I need to get it 
then I'm pretty sure this will sell out within a couple of days or weeks. So I may not be able to get it straight away, but then when the brand restocks, that's what they did with the Meet Me at the Underworld palette anyways, uh, then I will pick it up. I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen like that. And then the fourth product in this top five section is the M Cosmetics Coffee Shop. Um, I think bundle, because they sell singles. So this is another M Cosmetics. So the other M Cosmetics is spelled differently from this. This is E-M-M-E. -M -M -E. And I've actually heard somebody saying in the comments of a video months ago that the, this is a brand that has some really good singles. And when they announced this bundle with these stunning cool tones, and you can buy it as a palette. So for me, that's like, it's a little quad. It seems to have a really good like taupey brown shimmer and then some really good cool tone brown mattes. So this has my heart beating faster, like instantly. And I haven't really thought of what singles brands I would like to try this month, uh, this year. Um, I had a touch of Glen and Glam and Terra Moons on my, uh, on my radar last year. I think I want to try Glam Shop this year and possibly M Cosmetics, but I'm still a bit on the fence. But yeah, you, you guys know I love my cool tones. So this instantly was a, like this ding, ding, ding moment. And I keep thinking of this. And every single time I see this picture, I'm like, oh, I would like to own that for sure. And finally, something that I did purchase, and this was a bit of a spurgy, uh, splurgy purchase for sure, um, but it's the new Kaleidos release. So Kaleidos came out with this entire set of two quads, some blushes, and some of their new lip clays in their Smoky Nostalgia collection. And I got the entire set, minus the dresser, because I don't need something like that in my life. I would never use it. So that's why I left, you could opt out of the dresser and it was much cheaper than getting it with the dresser. So I was like, yay. Um, so yeah, I got the full collection. I don't normally do this. Like very often I'll just like pick and choose items, but I want to do some swatches with some of the lip clays next month in April. So it's like, it's good to have this like curated set to add to that roundup. So then I have a couple of more things to talk about. Not all of the shades in the line intrigue me enough to pick up everything because I don't love nude liquid lipsticks. So that's why I didn't buy any of the nudes that they do. Uh, but this collection looked like something I might really like. And then they have two cool toned quads, a smoky eye quad that's more gray toned and an, a little quad with cool tone browns, which apparently it's just totally up my street. And these blushes that they were doing also looked, looked really, really lovely. So I was like, Kaleidos, you really hit the, you really hit me in the feels right there with that launch. So this is also making its way to me as we speak. As I'm filming this, I just got the order confirm or the shipping confirmation last night. So I hope to be able to show you those products that I purchased in my next video. So this is a nice little segue into the final portion of this video where I'm be, I'll be showing you some of the products I purchased this month. Um, so what did I buy? I've, I've decided this year that I'm going to allow myself to make like one palette purchase a month. Uh, and the palette purchase I made in February is this. These are Adept Cosmetics palettes. And in my previous video, I talked to you about the things that I wanted to get, like brands I wanted to try, and Adept was on that list. And I got a notification saying that they were restocking some of their palettes. So I placed myself an order. It said it wouldn't ship until early March. And then halfway through February, all of a sudden, I got a confirmation that it was had, had been shipped and it was here within a week. Great. Yeah, that was great service. Uh, so I bought myself the Plain Jane Remastered. And this is what the palette looks like. Now this looks very boring when you look at it in the pan, but trust me, when you swatch these, wowza. These are all duochromes, multi-chromes, shimmers. This is not a standalone palette, but it's good to have some multi-chromes in palettes, I think. And the one I really wanted to get was the Nin Hydrin. This does have two cool tone mattes. And then it has all these like really pretty stunning purpley shades. This gold has a green flip. This is, these are stunning palettes. And I now understand why this brand is so incredibly expensive because every shimmer here has a flip. So these are expensive pigments to make. And then I got myself some base products. So I knew that in February I was going to be filming my highlighter collection video. 
and I knew I wanted to include this because I was aching to try it. This is the Lisa Eldritch Elevated Glow Highlighter in Cosmic Rose. I really enjoy it. It is prettiest under makeup though than it is when you wear it as a highlighter on top of it. It's definitely something that you need to layer on first and then blend your foundation on top and then it's super stunning. And then I got two more base products, something bougie and something more affordable. The Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation was one. The minute it was announced, it was on my radar. I was like, I want to try that because I love my Charlotte Tilbury, Tilbury Light Wonder so much. I bought it in the shade 3 Cool. Um, it seemed to be a better shade for me uh, in terms of how it blended away. When, it, when you go further down in the shade range, they stop doing undertones. And all of those shades were quite yellow. Uh, so that's why I thought this was better for me because it had the right undertone and I can always lighten it a little bit if need be or if I wear uh, bronzer and stuff, I'm pretty sure it's okay. So I went with a shade that's a little bit darker than I had expected actually. If I had, a, if I had bought this online, I would have gone for a lighter shade for sure. And then the Born to Glow from NYX in the shade Porcelain. I spotted this at Dugloss and I was very intrigued with it. So it seems to be a good affordable hydrating foundation and I love trying affordable um, makeup for sure and this seemed to have a pretty good shade range. So uh, I went with Porcelain because when I swatched it on the back of my hand it seemed to be the better match. And then I placed myself a Colourpop order when they announced they were doing like what 20 or 25% off and I bought a backup of the Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer in 4N Fair um, because mine is just looking a little grubby and this is one of my favorite tinted moisturizers so I thought I could repurchase it and because I was loving my Super Shock uh, cheek products so much especially the blushes I was trying I got some more, so I got Chiffon and I got uh, Magic Moon from the Tinkerbell collection and a lot of people have been raving about the Happy Thoughts highlighter from the Think uh, Tinkerbell collection so I figured that I could try one more Colourpop Super Shock highlighter I want to love these you guys, I really really do it's just that this is not my favorite formula for a highlighter so I'm gonna try these, I haven't put these on my face yet uh, so I got that in and then for once in my life, I did not buy a single Colourpop eyeshadow palette. I was super proud. I definitely put a couple in my cart and then took them out. But what I definitely focused on when it came to eyes was some more Super Shock shadows. So I got myself some of the shades as well. So this is Moonwalk, uh, which is a repromote, I believe. Uh, Rose Garden was a new shade. And this one, I've already swatched all of these, and this was very lackluster, so this, this is, this I'm not going to keep around, um, because that wasn't successful. And then I got a little quarry, which is a nice, like, taupey shade, which I think I'll get a lot of wear out of, because I love my Super Shocks in these, like, vibrant shades. And then I have Rooftop Cocktails, which is one of those, like, duochrome, like, fun, like, shades that I love cream shadows for. And then I got a repurchase of I Heart This. I decluttered this last year. This is like a more intense version of Ritz and I was missing it in my collection because every time I was like, well Ritz, Ritz is a bit too sheer and sparkly, I'd like something more. I was like, I used to own this and then they had it in stock so I was like, I'll just throw it in there. And then these I won't open because I want to make sure they're pristine. But I got two backups. They've re-promoted So Quiche, so I got a backup of that. And I, I already bought this for Black Friday, though. This is Ritz. But yeah, I also got a backup of So Quiche. So that's my ColourPop um, order that I did. And of course, but those videos have already gone live, so I didn't feel the need to show it in this video. But Essence and Catrice released their new products for spring summer 2022. So I'll make sure to link those videos down below because I already did my first impressions with both the Catrice line and the Essence products that have come out. So those, of course, I also did buy, but yeah. Those are things that are already up on the channel. So that's it for me for today. This was my new makeup releases video. I really hope you enjoyed watching today's video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, so I hope you like to stay tuned for more, and I hope to see you in my next video. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.